Hi guys, back in Birmingham today. Just about to go interview David Jameson, who is the current Police Crime Commissioner and also the candidate for Labour Party in the next lot of elections coming up in May. Um, do give us a follow, hashtag OurPCC, hashtag Simify. So how are you doing? Let's start with that. I'm fine and looking forward to the election uh, in a very short period of time and going round the streets, as we do in a democracy, telling people what I'm going to do if I'm re-elected and what the important things are, I think, for the electorate. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself as well? Well, I started off a long time ago. I was born in Birmingham and I uh, was uh, trained here as a teacher in, in, in Birmingham at a college now closed in Saltley. Um, I taught for several years here. I've taught around the country. And then in 1992, I went into Parliament in uh, Plymouth on the south coast. I uh, did 13 years. I was eight years as a government minister, four of which as a transport minister, banning things like uh, mobile phones while you go along and, um, and uh, many more things besides, like uh, crushing uninsured cars. Um, but particularly, I was involved there in reducing death and injury on the road for younger people and particularly for children. Um, after that, I thought I'd retired. I've been a local councillor as well. Uh, but 18 months ago, after the very sad death of Bob Jones, I was asked if I would come uh, to stand for this job. Brilliant. And if you could fundamentally change anything about the West Midlands Police Force, what would it be? The most fundamental thing I want to change is how the police force looks. Um, the number of black and Asian officers is very low indeed at the moment. That's nobody's fault. It's just a lot of those people were appointed a long time ago. So I want to change the look of the force, bring more new people in, and we're one of the few forces in the country that are actually recruiting new officers. But I want the people in the police to look more like uh, the police. So that's, a, that's the most fundamental thing I want to do in terms of the police. But most of all, I think one of the big, big challenges we've got now in the police is uh, some of the traditional crimes like burglary are going down, they've gone away, they're going down, but then the big area of challenge is cybercrime, internet-related crime. That is the single biggest challenge the police, industry and everybody has got in this country. And um, like you said, a lot of young people in the West Midlands are showing concerns about the, PC the PCSO cuts. How do you plan to bridge the void? Well, last November, the PCSOs from the Chief Council were getting their notices. I went round and listened to a lot of people, all the way from Coventry through Birmingham and Solihull into the black country, and I listened to community groups and people, every single one of them said, save the PCSOs. So I said in the end, the people pay for the PCSOs, the people want the PCSOs, therefore they stay. So there'll be no compulsory redundancies of the PCSOs because the people wanted them. And that's the politics of it. Um, the Chief Council may want to do one thing, but the people want another, and I have to interpret that uh, desire of the people uh, into activity and action. Excellent. And uh, what in your mind is the biggest challenge for young people in the region and they face in regards to crime and how do you plan to address, address these issues? I think the biggest single problem for younger people, and this, this has never been more difficult for younger people, is actually employment and getting into the uh, jobs market and getting good quality uh, jobs that are not just a, a job for now but a career uh, for the rest of their lives. That, I think, is the biggest single challenge we've got. One thing that I've done that is different from many other uh, police and crime commissions is I've made the work of the police an integral part of economic development. So creating places, uh, even in this area where we are now, creating places that are free from crime, where we get rid of the gang culture, uh, where investors want to invest, that is what will create uh, new jobs and enterprise. Many more things besides like tackling modern day slavery, tackling some of the, uh, the, j the jams on our roads and the uh, really long delays that there are sometimes. All those things can damage the economy. And I think to get younger people into work, into productive jobs, I think is the biggest challenge we've got. Um, safety on public transport has been highlighted as a serious issue for local people. What are your plans to make people feel safe? Well, uh, a few years ago we had the, the youth commissioners. Um, I have 20 youth commissioners uh, who are volunteers who operate right across the West Midlands. They came back and with their sampling of opinions of young people, uh, and I'm talking about right down to infant, sorry, infant junior school children, quite young children they were talking to, uh, up to sort of people in their 18 or 20 year olds. What they came back with is the risks they felt uh, on the public transport system. So what we put in place is a, an action it's between the British Transport Police, the West Midlands Police, the bus operators and tram and rail operators, and the Centro, uh, 
together we've worked on a plan uh, to reduce the number of incidents on our uh, public transport. That has had huge success. It's reduced the antisocial behaviour complaints by about two thirds. And when you look at the figures, it's actually younger people who are far more likely to suffer types of crime, hate crime or disturbance than older people are. Although well, it's the older people that complain about it, it's the younger people generally who are suffering from it. And let's, let's change it to a more positive note then go, um, what one thing makes you proud to be from the West Midlands? Well, I, I, I'm proud because Birmingham, Black Country, Sol Hill Country, they're great places, they're, there's a great people. And the thing about the people in this area is there's no great river, there's no great mineral resources, the resources are the people. And it, it's a dynamic, exciting area. And I'm seeing it becoming a more diverse area where you've now got people of many different religions. I, I think actually that's exciting and uh, that really makes me proud to be part of the West Midlands. Let's have a quick chat about civic tech now. Um, it helps citizens connect to politicians in, say, decisions that affect them. As the PCC, how, do you, how would you utilise these tools to make yourself more accountable? Well, what I've done is uh, a number of things. Some of the traditional things, like uh, using the uh, traditional media, television and radio, are still very powerful uh, ways of communicating with people. You've had a lot of people, if I appear on television, a lot of people will come back to me straight away and say, I saw you doing this and why aren't you doing that? But I'm doing more than that now. I have a, a monthly session uh, with what we call board, and appointed by me, cross party I have to say. We have sessions where we hold the chief constable to account and the senior officers, uh, which is what my job is essentially. And on, in those sessions what we do is we hold them in public, we webcast them, they're on my website if people want to look at them. So we question the chief. Now what we're aware of, not many people come to the meeting, but we're aware that actually a lot of people are looking at the webcast straight away, but they're also looking at the recordings of it uh, from the past. So that gives people an opportunity to get involved. The other thing we're doing as well is twittering a lot of the information out that we're doing. We keep a constant Twitter feed going so people can feed back about initiatives we've got. And our website is very comprehensive. We do get a lot of feedback, but we've got to do a lot more. And I think in a democracy, in a modern democracy, we've got to find a much more exciting way, not just of telling people what we're doing, but actually involving them in what they're doing so that they become integrated in the decision making. Brilliant, so thanks a lot for your time, but before I let you go, is there anything you want to say to the young people of, of the West Midlands area and why they should vote for you basically? Well I'm launching a young people's uh, manifesto uh, in this police and crime commissioner election and I've a number of things in that about things that we can do in the police, create some of our own apprenticeships, Stop and search, we've done a lot about. Actually reducing the number of young people who are stopped and searched, massively reduced the number. Uh, we're doing a whole host of other things like inward investment and creating places where people can invest and working with the schools and colleges uh, to encourage and help young people into work. So I'm doing a lot. Um, I hope that people will look at that and look at my record on my website and then they can choose how they want to vote because that's what we do in a democracy. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Just finishing with uh, David Jameson there. It's now over to you. Get involved with the hashtag RPCC. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter as well, at Civify.